hello guys welcome to my channel in this video i will take you through the process of making this sweet lime fruit what we call mosambi in india so let's get into the process i am using buono gouache color for this painting which are available in 12 shades i bought it from amazon you can find it in any online shopping site or in your local store if available i am in love with the color as the pigmentation of the colors are very good and the colors are very rich and vibrant as well the reference image that I used for this painting is from Pix7. It's a fantastic website for high quality reference images that are completely copyright free for using in your projects. But it is always better to give credit to the photographer who puts his shocks down for taking such mind blowing photos. You can surely give this website a visit if you are finding it difficult to get good reference images for your paintings or any sort of artwork that you want to create. As you can see my progress in the work so far. I started with the initial drawing of the fruit. Now a few people may suggest you not to trace down your drawings as it will only cultivate bad habits. But I don't think in that spectrum as I am completely agree with the fact that the freehand drawing is the best practice ever and one should practice that as well. But there is nothing wrong with the tracing as well, especially if you are going to do something realistic or rather photorealistic because you will put hours of agony and patience for the desired result and if after everything finishes and you find that your drawing is not perfect because it will be even more prominent due to the amount of work you did on the painting that will eventually show up your lags in the drawing which will be a nightmare for you I guess. So I myself prefer to work freehand while working in transparent mediums like watercolor, ink tents, etc. where I don't want to end up with harsh lines showing up in the end. And for that I also practice freehand and most importantly the initial lines will not boost you to do a good realistic painting unless you are sufficiently skillful enough and has knowledge about the process of painting. So for me what other things doesn't matter. I have no objections about the tracing as I remember once an artist gave a very good statement saying that person gives you a commission for a portrait of his son he will more likely to see his son's face in the canvas when you finish the painting. For him the process doesn't matter the end result matters. I know I just went with the flow in a different topic so let's get back to this work. As you can see I started very roughly blocking the initial colors and for that I used pale green and lemon yellow mixed with yellow ochre and also a little bit of burnt sienna with the mix. Once the base layer is established I just started blocking the darks and the lights. Yes, the bellows are the most important things to keep in mind while painting realistically. I just added a bit of viridian green with the pale green to make the dark tones and I also gave some attention to the lighter areas which I established by mixing a palette of lemon yellow and white. Most of the time while painting realistically people try to achieve everything in one layer and loses their patience but it is more about building layers on top of layer with the maintenance of adequate texture of the surface which is another significant thing one should keep in mind as texture gives feeling to a particular thing. Actually realism is the illusion created with the display of perfect color, form, shape, value and the texture. If all these aspects are correct in your painting you will surely end up with a better painting than the previous. So as you are looking I am just trying to add those textures along with some patches here and there on the surface of the fruit. In my reference image as it is very important to keep a keen observation towards your reference image and one tip here I would like to share is that using the brush in the right manner is very important because you can see how I am making those rough marks on the surface of the lime but here I am not copying exactly what I am looking in my reference because doing that will take you ages. The details are important but you should know how to be productive with the details rather than working like a printer just to print what it is served as. You should be able to omit and add details as per your requirement which makes your painting looks better than the photograph. I will just keep on working with the lights and darks and also will add a few more intricate details those which are more prominent that will hold the composition together and also helps in bringing the fruit looks more naturalistic and popping out of the paper which is merely an illusion though I am not a magician as you know.
so after working for some time this is how it looks in the end now i will move to the second part of the fruit that will be more fun part to do as it has a lot of vibrancy and glazes on it like the first part here also i am just blocking the basic colors to fill in the shapes which are actually the kind of divisions that are separated by some sort of soft tissues that holds the seeds and the juicy fruits together I also blocked the basic colors for the seeds which are basically almost white mixed with a little amount of crimson red. The colors that I used here mainly is permanent orange and the lemon yellow mixed with the yellow ochre. To show the depth of the divisions I made a darker shadow of colors by mixing the crimson red and a little bit of mauve and black. Once the basic shapes were established I just went on to put some more definite shapes to pull everything out the effect of juiciness of the surface with highlight was the most challenging part for me to do but fun as well one important thing to keep on mind here is that you should try not to do the exact shapes of the individual peeps of the fruits rather you should look them as a clump and try to make it look alike as in your reference images because copying the exact individual pips will lead you to frustration it is more like painting the hairs where we don't paint each individual hair but try to paint them as a clump of hairs with some hairs being definite the same thing works here you need not necessarily has to put each individual pips rather you should only paint those which are in focus with extreme sharpness and keeping the rest watery and blended and that difference is created through colors gradually i built the layers upon the layers to make the fruit looks natural and i kept on working for some time by adding the extreme highlights which is pure white glazed by yellow now this is an important factor as well as i was able to see a lot of lemon yellowish color that was reflecting through the orange tints of the fruits but it was difficult to establish the yellow color on top of the relatively darker tone of crimson and orange so i just used the technique of glazing where i painted the desired texture in white and then glazed it with yellow which added a wing to this painting in realism all these little things matters the most now the people who are following my channel for quite some time can see that my previous videos were very short and suddenly i am throwing this one along with boys over and all there is something fishy isn't it actually it is the feedback and the support of you people which drove me to do this as i received feedback from a lot of my viewers that they enjoyed my previous videos a lot but those were too fast for them to actually follow my process so they suggested to do a little longer videos and to add voiceover if possible and voila here i am though it took a quite longer time to actually complete it anyways let's get back to the work i am still adding the relatively smaller details and dark areas to provide depth to this lemon so that it actually looks cut it
So after adding all those minute details on the above area, I went to the lower base of the fruit which is also blocked in by very basic colors that is pale green mixed with lemon yellow and a little bit of Prussian blue to give it a darker shade. I then started building the texture following the lights and the shades where the light is hitting the surface of the fruit diagonally. After working for some more time and adding the final details, the two parts are completed and then I moved to paint the background. Now it is a very interesting as I was planning to make the background a kind of abstract and scratchy with rapid brushwork but then I changed my mind and I thought that it would be a bit exaggerated. Once the background dried, I started working on the cast shadow that is also a very important part of the painting because that was the thing which was actually supposed to push the subject forward and the background backward. While painting shadows, most of the people make a basic mistake is that they put a flat rigid color as the shadow, whereas the reality is different. As here I use the mauve color mixed with burnt sienna and the ivory black to create the shadow color and also used a bit of tint mauve to establish a few grains here and there around the shadow. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you want to support my work, then please do like, comment and share my works and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon which is very important so that you get notified as soon as I post a new video.